from this to this. Welcome to the channel. My name is Hero, and this video I created because I was asked to go a little bit deeper into the ShaperBox 3 LFO technique that I used. Thank you for the feedback, and I love the questions. Sound design is my favorite, so let's get into it. As I explain this technique, you may see me go back and forth between these two tracks. They're exactly the same. Just the top one has the effects on, the bottom one has the effects off. The effects off is super loud, so I have to take it down another seven decibels. And I just wanted to be able to do that quickly for this demo. And starting with this OPXAV, and I just wanted to see what I could do with the sound that I had selected. And it sounds like this. For my effects rack, I have an EQ8. This is actually not doing anything right now, but this EQ8 gives me access to being able to quickly mess with the high pass, the low pass, you know, the high gain, the low gain, the width, and the output. It just gives me quick access to do some of the common features that I tend to do on uh, different sounds. For the next effect is the UFX. And on this one, I uh, just used a random preset. I didn't do anything really, put the mix at about 50, and it sounds like this. The next effect that I used is Shaper Box 3, and that's what's giving the stutter choppy effect on the sound. And what you want to do is add an instance of Shaper Box 3 to your track, and then click on the wrench icon to open the plugin. In the plugin, click on filter. Down here in the basic shapes area, I clicked on a downward slope. Pull this down to your own liking. And you can play this, the sound as you're doing it just to hear what you like. To um, adjust the automation of the uh, how fast it, the sound is going through this tool, I clicked on one bar and changed it to Hertz. And now, in order to adjust the automation, go back to Ableton, click on this little icon at the top so you can see your automation. This is the automation that I created, but let's use what is up here so I can just show you how I created this. And you can see that the automation that we want to, uh, to adjust is filter cutoff mid speed, but yet filter cutoff mid timing mode is what's showing. Now you may click on this and, and go, oh, okay, let me just jump in here and, and go to the parameter I want, but you might not see it. Well, if that happens to you, all you need to do is go back to the plugin, adjust, just make a change on the parameter that you want to, to adjust or click on the parameter you want to adjust. And you see now it automatically just changed to the filter um, or to the parameter that I want to adjust in automation. And then to create the automation, you need three points. So point one, point two, and then the third point. And the third point is where I like start to mess around with and pull around. And um, I also was keeping in mind when I was doing this, I wanted to make sure that the effect was ending at the, at the end of the chord set. So you can see that this chord is one, is one, two, three bars. And then the next chord is one, two, three, four, five bars. So it's three, five, which is eight bars. So three, five, three, five, three, five, all through the track. So when you're making, so when I was making this, I made sure that the effect was from uh, uh, three bars. And then the next part that I wanted to adjust, I just put it at the end of the five bars and just adjusted it that way. And once I had everything that I wanted, I then just on my keyboard pressed command D that way I could just duplicate it because I wanted the effect to do the same thing across the whole track. The other way to write this automation is to just highlight the area that you want to add automation to. Right click, go down to insert shape, 
And then you can just insert any of the shapes that already comes with Ableton. Like let's choose this downward slope. And this might be a little aggressive, but let's see what it sounds like. So this one was a little aggressive and you can tone it down, just pull down the parameter wherever you want and adjust it to your liking. If you have a question about a music technique that I did and you want me to dive a little bit deeper, I'm happy to explain. Just let me know in the comments below. Let's get back into it. The last effect that I used on this technique is Transition by Baby Audio, and I used it on the main instrument bus. And I used it very, very lightly, but you can hear it right here. Um, the automation that you're seeing right now is automating the transition control knob. This is the main macro knob that controls all the other parameters. And it sounds like this. Here's the whole sound in context of the song. If you want to hear the song that's associated with this video, check out this next video right here and I'll see you in the next one.